first graders, it's Miss Vaughn coming to you from my in-home studio. It is so good to get to see you guys. I miss you like crazy, and I want you to know that I'm always thinking about you and wishing you the very best. From my heart to your family, we miss you so much. But I want to tell you guys, this week is going to be super exciting in art. We are going to travel across the world. Now, you get to pick our destination. So whether that is a different country, like France, or a different state, like Colorado, New Mexico, California, Florida, or maybe it's just a different town, we are going to pick our destination first. I think that mountains with snow covered mountains are my favorite. So I'm going to do something like that for my destination. Hmm. Then I'm going to step you through the process of making a 3D hot air balloon. This is really exciting. And if you look at my links on your kinder and first grade tab under the website, I have a lovely template that you can print out if you'd like. If you don't have a printer or you don't want to print it out, that's perfectly okay. You and your mom or your dad or an older sibling can make your template on your own. We are going to be creating a light bulb shape for our hot air balloon. So I've already cut out the template so it looks like this. And you guys just need to either draw it or cut it out for me. But let's take a closer look. On my template, there's a dash dash line down the center. You're going to want to make sure that you have that on your piece as well, because that's going to remind you to do stuff in just a little bit. The tricky part is we have to trace four different colors of this piece. Miss Vaughn, I don't have four different colors of paper at my house. That's okay too. You could use regular computer paper or printer paper and you can color them with any material you have at your house, whether that's paint or crayons or markers, or they could all be the same shape. That is your choice. The only thing is, is I would prefer not to see a whole lot of white because white may be in our background. So I'm going to start out with um, my blue paper. And notice that my tracer fits on the blue really nicely. I'm also going to take a look at my purple paper. And my paper is a different shape. So if I want to work smarter and not harder, I may layer my pieces together so that I can cut two out at a time instead of one. So I'm actually going to trace on my purple because it's my smaller sheet and I'm going to use a colored pencil. I'm going to use my non-drawing hand to hold down the template and the paper. My drawing hand is going to be in charge of tracing the whole thing. So as I press down on the paper, I'm going to go around and trace my hot air balloon. I might have to adjust my paper or my hand. Just take your time, try not to rush. Whoops. And you may come to find out, ta-da! There is a pretty good outline of my hot air balloon. So like I said earlier, I could work Smarter, not harder. I'm going to put my blue and my purple on top of each other. I'm going to put my thumb in the small hole and all my other fingers in the big hole. I'm going to open and close and I'm going to turn my paper, not my scissors. If I need to move my hand. Moving my paper not my scissors. After you cut out your pieces, I obviously don't need these anymore. 
but you're gonna need a total of four different colors. So I just cut out blue and purple, and Mrs. Vaughn has already cut out yellow and green. So let me get those out for you. So you can see all four colors I chose. There's yellow, and here is my green. Now, here's the hard part. We have to fold these in half vertically, so that means up and down. And I've noticed, because I've practiced a few times before I did this, is if you start with this base, it's going to be a lot easier to match up the edges of your base, pinch them, and then start folding your others, increase them. Now, you can check the other side to make sure that they're symmetrical, and if there's any part that you need to trim a little bit, you can do that, because you want both sides to be the same. There are my few scraps. I'm gonna put this one aside. I'm gonna do the same thing for my purple. <laughs> the reason why I'm having you do the hot air balloon first is it needs time to dry. So you're then going to decide which order you want your colors in. I think I'm gonna do something like this. That looks pretty good, right? I think I'm gonna use a glue bottle instead. I, for some reason, can't seem to find my glue sticks. So, I'm just gonna try my best not to use a whole lot of glue. We just need to use a little bit just to make sure that both pieces stick. So, these are a V shape. And we're gonna use that V shape to our advantage. We're gonna attach two walls together in our V shape, like so. So I'm gonna have a purple wall attached to my blue wall. If I put them side by side folded, they should make one. Piece. So here is my first one. I'm gonna open my book and lay them on top and press down. Remember, we're keeping our squish zone, okay? And making sure that most of the glue does not come off. If you notice, like if I look on this side, I don't see any purple. But when I look on this side, I might see a little bit blue. Don't cut it yet. We will do that um, at the end after these guys dry. So here is one half of our balloon. We're gonna fold this blue over to make our blue V. And my next color of choice is going to be green. So again, I'm gonna lay my folded balloon next to each other to make one big balloon. I'm going to trace my shape. I'm going to trace my shape and I'm going to fold the green side over to the blue side. I'm going to try to match them up. Press down my glue so that they fuse together and stay strong. Open up my green side. Make any adjustments if I need to. Add my last color, so my last color is yellow. I need to make it look like a full balloon first. And then second, I'm going to trace my shape. And glue. On. My kinder friends, this part's going to be hard, so if you have a big sister or big brother, you may ask them for help, or maybe wait and do this part when mom and dad are free. But the next step I'm going to have you guys do will be super simple for you guys to do without your parents. Alright, so this right here is going to be our hot air balloon. It's very cool. 
I love this part of the project. It's probably the most exciting piece, but I need to make sure that they all dry and fuse themselves together. So my suggestion is to get a really heavy book and I want you to fold them all together and I want you to put the heavy book on top and we're just going to set him aside while I work on the background and everything else for this assignment. So I'm just going to push this aside and don't worry about it for now. The next part of the assignment is really simple. It's creating your destination. So if you want to be at a beach, you're gonna draw me a beach. If you want to be at um, Disney World, then you're gonna draw me Disney World. The only thing I wanna remind you is where does a hot air balloon normally live? That's right, high in the sky. So you're gonna see more sky in our landscape than land. So first we need to decide where our horizon line is. Now, the horizon line is where the land meets the sky. So if I want more sky than land, I think my horizon line needs to be um, at the middle of my paper or lower. And because I think I'm gonna do mountains, mine is gonna be a lot lower of a horizon line. My horizon line is going to go right here. Okay? So I'm going to draw my mountains first. I want my landscape to be something like this, but because our hot air balloon is gonna take up most of our paper and we want it high in the sky, I'm gonna have to be like a camera. I'm gonna have to zoom in on my landscape to just see this top portion. So that's where I am. I'm zoomed in to about halfway of my mountains and up. So let me finish coloring my dark purple. And I think the next step is our sun because I don't know about you, but a bright sunny day is probably the best day to get in a hot air balloon. But if you would like to do a different sort of sky or different time of day where you see the moon or the stars or whatever you prefer, this is your choice. This is your art. You are the artist. I am merely an inspiration leader. All right, I think I'm gonna do my sun. So I'm gonna have an oval and I'm going to make a swirly line. And I'm gonna use yellow. Last week, we kind of went over, if I mix red and yellow, I'm gonna get some sort of a orange. I also want those rays to come out bright and shining. So I'm gonna pick out some colors for that. There's my bright, shining sun. So what's left is gonna be our clouds, if you want clouds in your sky. And I know you can't see them if you use a white pastel, so we'll have to see the magic in just a little bit. When it comes to art, three is a really good magic number, so I would at least make three clouds in your sky. All right, that's all done. My last step is going to be painting my sky. You don't have to paint your sky. You could do everything with marker or everything with crayon or combine them all. That's just what I'm doing. I'm combining watercolor and crayon because of the fun wax resist that happens when we do it. I'm also gonna use my daddy patty, which is my bigger brush because I have a lot bigger of a space to paint. 
I use more water than paint for this part. Voila! So, this is what's going to happen next time in part two. We are going to combine our hot air balloon and our landscape so that you can escape to your favorite place or somewhere you've never been. This is our great adventure assignment. I hope you're excited because I am. I'll see you guys in part two.